For decades, doctors have been receiving all sorts of perks from pharmaceutical companies. Paid speaking gigs, golf junkets, food, vacations, the list goes on and on. And in return, drug companies are rewarded with more prescriptions for drugs that Americans, most of the time, really don't need. But those days could be coming to an end thanks to an overlooked provision of the Affordable Care Act, and I have Howard Nations with me now to tell us about it. Howard, I have to admit, from the start, I've been a, a very vocal critic of Obamacare. Uh, my issue with it is, obviously, it does not go far enough. It does not do anything to you know, help with pharmaceutical price negotiation. But a couple weeks ago, the story came out, something I had no idea about, that there was a provision within Obamacare that makes uh, uh, doctors have to disclose how much money they're receiving from Big Pharma. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, Obamacare requires those disclosures, and what they show is what we've known all along, is that there's a substantial connection between the medical business, the healthcare providers, specifically the doctors, and the pharmaceutical companies and the device manufacturers. We know it in the past from whistleblowers uh, who came forward and told us about payments that were being made to doctors. We know it from uh, drug lawsuit settlements, major settlements where they made it a provision of the settlement that the pharmaceutical company had to reveal payments that they were making to doctors. And we know that from the, the whistleblowers that a lot of civil and criminal penalties have been imposed because of the kickbacks and the junkets to doctors to influence them to prescribe off-label, to prescribe expensive brands instead of generics, and even to conduct phony, phony studies for the FDA to get approval. So th this is really nothing new to pharma plaintiff's lawyers because we sue for death and injury for tens of thousands of patients. We discover off-label use all the time. We discover phony uh, clinical studies. We see knowing promotion of defective products and dangerous drugs, and we see doctors in total complicity with this. And so you, you know, obviously as a, as a trial lawyer, you've taken on the pharmaceutical companies. So you've seen the documents you go through and you know that this happens. You've known it for a very long time. And now what's so great about this, you know, uh, piece of Obamacare is that the average person, you know, maybe they've been going to their family doctor for 20 or 30 years. They can now see you know, is this guy on the take? You know, has Big Pharma been taking him out to dinner every week or has he gone on, you know, vacations, you know, on their dime? And that that is very, very important, as you point out, because a lot of times we do have these, you know, pharmaceutical sales reps, the pharmaceutical companies encouraging doctors to promote off-label use. And that's where a lot of trouble comes in. But, you know, give us a little bit more on, on why this is such a problem. You know, why, why do we need to know this? Well, first of all, this is a multi-billion dollar industry. And thanks to whistleblowers and thanks to the lawyers who bring these lawsuits against the pharmaceutical companies, we know about all the uh, civil and criminal fraud that's taking place. And what happens when you see a $3 billion fine against Glasgow Smith Klein, such as occurred in July of 2012, uh, for misbranding Paxil so they could sell it to people under 18 years of age. That came about as a result of the Justice Department taking information that came from whistleblowers and from the work of the plaintiff's lawyers in prosecuting the original cases. We do all the work. Uh, when it's all over, the Justice Department comes along and says, okay, fine, that looks good. They take our information and then they use it to, to impose these large fines. But to give you some idea how big a problem it is, in addition to Glasgow Smith Klein's $3 billion penalty, in September 2009, Pfizer paid the $2.3 billion uh, fine for fraudulent uh, promotion. And these are civil and criminal fines. And uh, in November 2013, Johnson & Johnson paid $2.2 billion uh, for kickbacks to doctors and to, and to pharmacies uh, and to doctors for promoting off-label use. And just so we can understand what off-label use is, the, the FDA approves the drug for a very specific use. 
the companies are prohibited by law. It is illegal for them to promote that drug for any other use other than what was approved by the FDA. But doctors, for whatever reason, doctors can prescribe that same drug for any use they want to, despite the fact that it hasn't been approved by the FDA for that use. So the doctors alone can increase by billions of dollars, literally, increased by billions of dollars the sales by the uh, drug company by simply prescribing it to teenagers, to children, for whole different uses other than for what it was approved. So, so th well, the result is that the, the pharmaceutical companies spend millions of dollars to influence the doctors to do exactly that. So, and, and I guess this is just kind of an extreme, you know, scenario, but basically you could go into your doctor and say, look, I'm having these really horrible migraines. And the doctor says, oh, you know what? Let me give you some Zoloft for that. Now, I know it's, right. it's, it's an antidepressant, but, but trust me, it's going to treat your migraine as well. And that's, right. you know, a situation, maybe not that extreme, but that is what's, what's happening. It's been happening for a very long time. And now we can find out, is he doing this? Because Big Pharma, you know, just paid for him to go to the Caribbean for two weeks. And but 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 it's 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 also it's not just that. It's not just, you know, flat out gifts. There's there's other things. I know ProPublica has done a fantastic job of laying out uh, things like speaking fees that these doctors are getting. You know, uh, tell us about some of those. There's a great article uh, this past week in The New York Times on this that during a five month period, from August to December two, uh, 2013, the drug and device companies paid doctors $380 million during a five-month period for just for speaking and consulting fees. Some of the doctors got $500,000 each. That's $100,000 per month during that time frame. It must be a hell of a speech. That's all I can say. <laughs> and also between August and December of 2013, the drug companies paid 4.4 million payments to more than 500,000 healthcare providers and hospitals, totaling $3.5 billion. That's to say that this is not an isolated case. They made those payments to 500,000 healthcare providers in that five month period. And, and the Times also shows their own and other studies show that doctors involved with drugs and devices uh, with that industry are more likely to prescribe drugs, the more expensive drugs, and potentially inappropriate drugs uh, than, than normal doctors, than those who are not associated in that fashion. So it does, you know, Big Pharma is winning with their strategy. They know I can pay, you know, this little local doctor or maybe a, a hospital doctor, come to our conference, you know, give them $100,000 to speak for 30 minutes just to tell this group of people that, hey, you know, a drug like, like Paxil works really well. It's a great drug. Great drug. Give me, give me my $100,000. And it's, it's really, I mean, that seems to oversimplify it, but it really is that simple. And there are times as well where the, the drug company itself will, will ghostwrite a paper, the doctor will stick his name on it, and they'll send it out to medical journals. And it's just the company uh, doing these fluff pieces, these advertorials, if you will, about how great their drugs are, and they get credibility by having a well-respected doctor put his name on it. And uh, I, I, know, I, I know you've seen this in the past. It's just, it is amazing when you start to look at this and realize that this has been happening and, and we, we didn't know. Well, it's not just the drug companies, it's also the medical device manufacturers. And they work heavily a lot of times with, with royalties. In that same report from the New York Times, they, they said that in a five month period, there's a San Antonio orthopedic who received in excess of $7 million in royalties over a five month period. In royalties, travel expenses, and speaking engagements from Arthrex for promoting their uh, orthopedic surgery devices. And there's currently a case that's in litigation uh, of a California doctor who received in excess of $8 million in royalties and travel and speaking fees by, for traveling around and promoting the Pew ASR hip implants. The problem was that the product was defective. Thousands of plaintiffs were injured and had to have hip replacements as a result of it. The product was taken off the market. 
there's now, as a result of discovery by plaintiff's attorneys, there's now been a major settlement. But that's the kind of thing that you see on a regular basis in the uh, device, on the device side of this scheme. And, you know, you just brought up a great point. You know, it's mostly the result of the actions of, of plaintiff's attorneys like yourself. And now we are seeing some pushback against these big pharma bribes from within the medical community, aren't we? Yes, and it's from a very interesting source. It's the Medical Students Association. And the medical students uh, said, you know, we're not going to put up with this. This whole idea of it's a conflict of interest. How many times do you have to be told this? A Harvard medical student who's a spokesman for the group of the American Medical Students Association said, quote, we don't want doctors to receive what are effectively bribes from companies. And the result of that movement has been that the, some of the academic medical centers and the medical schools and uh, have established conflict of law, uh, conflict of interest rules. But the fact of the matter is, there are just so many billions of dollars involved in these sales and so many billions and billions of dollars in profits to these pharmaceutical and device manufacturers, it will never stop. They just figure the price of that $4 billion pri uh, fine. If, if we get caught, we're gonna have to pay $2 billion uh, to settle the cases with the plaintiffs. We're going to have to pay $2 billion to the government. So they just add that into the price of the product and roll like right along and keep making billions of dollars. So I don't see any, uh, I don't see any help on the horizon. Well, uh, you know, one of, one of the bright spots here is that we do have people like you and Mike Papantonio out there fighting this every day, holding Big Pharma accountable, holding doctors accountable, and protecting consumers who, who have no idea that this is happening. And Howard, we always appreciate everything you do, and thank you for being with us today. My pleasure, Karen. Thank you.